ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة We begin with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal We praise Him we seek His help and we ask His forgiveness. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none that can misguide Him. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, there is none that can guide Him. And I bear witness that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and with no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His slave and final messenger. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah as He deserves you to have taqwa of Him. And do not die except as Muslims. O mankind, have taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single soul and from it its mate and from them both many men and women. And have taqwa of Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. Indeed, Allah is ever watchful over you. Or you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and speak a word that is true. He will correct your deeds and forgive your sins and whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved a great success. To continue the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst of matters in this religion are the newly introduced acts of worship and all of these newly introduced acts of worship are innovations and all innovation is misguidance. The topic for this khutbah today was suggested by some of the brothers who are involved with the Islamic society. And I thought it was a beautiful topic and one which all of us need. Whether we are visitors to Newcastle, or whether we are people who have lived here our whole lives, whether we are students, or whether we are people involved in the world of work, whatever it is that we are doing, and wherever it is in the world we are, there is a question that is extremely important for all of us to answer. How do I protect my religion? How do I safeguard the most important thing to me? We have to start off by saying that our religion, our Islam, our Iman is the most valuable thing that we have. And it's enough for us to realize that without it we cannot be from the people of Jannah. And the life after this world is an everlasting life. And therefore this Islam that we have and this Iman that we have is the single most important and the single most valuable thing that any of us possess. And if we recognize that it's the most important and the most valuable thing that we possess, then we have to ask ourselves, how do we protect it? Like if one of you were to possess a large amount of money, he has a lot of, a lot of cash in a briefcase under his bed, 
And he asks himself the question, how do I keep it safe? All day he's worrying about it. What can I do to keep it safe? Or someone has expensive jewelry, or someone has a, an expensive car. All the time in your mind you're thinking, how do I keep it safe? Be careful where you park it, be careful, don't leave it, don't leave things on display in your window and so on. You're worrying about how to keep things in the dunya safe. But the question is, how do you keep your iman safe? How do you keep your religion safe? Wherever in the world you are, whatever your circumstances might be. Now this is obviously a long topic for what will be a short khutbah bi ta'ala. However, there are some points that we can make and I hope these points are going to stay in everyone's mind. Some of the things that I'm going to mention to you bi ta'ala, they're going to be things that already occurred to your mind when we started the topic. And some of them might be things that hadn't occurred to you before. The very first thing by which you protect your religion is to protect the belief that you have about Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the belief that you have about Islam in your heart. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala linked the strength of your belief to your safety in this dunya and the akhirah. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-An'am in ayah number 82 الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِذُلْمِ those who believe Iman and they don't mix up their Iman with Dhulm and the Prophet ﷺ, he said that Dhulm here it means a shirk it means to make a partner with Allah they don't mix up their Iman with making a partner with Allah or by making a partner with Allah it is they who will have al amn they will be safe they will be secure, they will be protected. muhtadun, And they are the people who are guided. Allah promised you safety and security. And Allah Azza wa Jal promised you guidance when you preserve that basic belief that every Muslim has to have. So it's not right that we start our discussion on protecting yourself by talking about anything else. The very first thing that you have to protect is to protect your proper understanding of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and your understanding of what it means to believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers and to believe in the last day and to believe in the divine decree, the good of it and the bad. When you protect these things and you don't mix up your belief by falling into errors and making a partner with Allah in this or in that. And bear in mind, making a partner with Allah can be something very subtle. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ الشِّرْكُ الْخَفِي or الشرك الْخَفِي He said, أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The thing that I'm scared the most for you is the hidden shirk. That one of you shows off in your prayer, that one of you does something for someone else because he sees his brother looking at him or he's worried about his reputation and he starts to do things for the people instead of for Allah. Protecting your Iman from being mixed up with shirk is the greatest way that you can gain protection and safety and security in this dunya and in the akhir. The second point that I'm going to make following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa jal said in surah al-Nur, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Let the people who go against his command take a warning. Those people who go against the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah threatens them with two things. Number one, Allah threatens them with a fitna. That Allah is going to put you into a trial. Allah is going to put you into a difficult situation. Some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they were asked, they said, Al-fitna to shirk. They said the fitna is that this person will start making partners with Allah. But the reality is when you disobey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when you turn away from his sunnah, the outcome is al-fitna. That you get put into a trouble, into a trial or a tribulation. Or you see them adabun alim, or a severe punishment from Allah. So by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
as much as we are able, learning it, studying it, following it, implementing it, we can be from the people who save ourselves from the fitan, from the trials and tribulations. And from the people who save ourselves from the punishment of Allah, whether it is al-adhab al-adna or al-adhab al whether it is the small punishment that happens in this world, or whether it is the greater punishment that happens yawm al -qiyam. The third thing by which you protect yourself wherever you are is your salah, your prayer. Allah Azza wa Jal said, حَافِذُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْمُسْطَى وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Guard your prayers. Guard them. Guard your prayers. Especially the middle prayer. Aisha radiallahu anha, she had in her mushaf, and some of the scholars, they said it was from the qiraat, that was from Aisha radiallahu anha, that she used to recite, حَافِذُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْمُسْطَى صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ Be careful about your prayers especially the middle prayer and she used to recite the asr prayer which says that as salatul wusta the middle prayer is salatul asr but not only salatul asr jundab or jundab ibn abdullah radiallahu anhu he said that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man salla subh fa huwa fi dhimmatillah Whoever prays the Fajr prayer, in some of the narrations, whoever prays the Fajr prayer in the Jama'ah, Allah is giving you a guarantee that you're going to be safe. You are within Allah's guarantee. Allah has guaranteed for you that you're going to be okay. You're going to be safe if you pray the Fajr prayer in the Jama'ah. Add to that the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya ghulam inni u'allimuka kalimat. O young man, I'm going to teach you some words. Ihfadillah, ihfadik. Guard the things that Allah told you to guard and Allah will guard you. Protect the things that Allah told you to protect and Allah will protect you. Add that now to the hadith, to the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. Hafidhu ala salawat. What do we learn from this? That the more you guard your prayers, the more Allah will guard you. The more you're careful about your prayers, the more Allah will protect you. Guard the things that Allah told you to guard, and Allah will guard you. You want to be safe wherever you are, you want to be protected wherever you are. One of the greatest means of being protected wherever you are is for you to protect your prayers. And being careful about your prayers is not just a matter of praying five times a day. That's the minimum standard. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahu wa salah. Faman tarakaha faqad kafar. The difference between us and them is the prayer. Meaning the thing that makes you a Muslim is you pray five times a day. That's just the minimum standard. <coughs> but if you want Allah's protection, you have to think about how you pray. Is it the one minute salah that finishes in 90, you know, 90 seconds and you're done? Is it a prayer that is with khushu'ah? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The believers are truly successful, those who are humbly submissive in their prayer. You have to think about where you pray. Is it a salah which is in the jama'ah? Even if you can't make a masjid, but even to make a jama'ah, to have two or three or four or five or six that gather together and pray together. Or is it a salah where every one of these five prayers, or most of them you pray by yourself? And then when do you pray? Is it five minutes before the next prayer starts? Or are you implementing the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was asked, ayyul islami khayr or ayyul a'mali khayr? Which of the deeds are best? And the Prophet ﷺ said, As-salatu fi awwal waqtiha. That you pray at the earliest possible time. The more you do these things, the more Allah will protect you. And the more Allah Azza wa Jal will keep you safe. From the things which protect a person. And perhaps this is the greatest 
in terms of the biggest topic <coughs> of what protects a person is at taqwa Think about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Allah Azza wa Jal said, when you go on a journey, take your zad, take your provision, tazawwadu, take your provisions. When you travel to another country, you took things with you. You took your passport, you took some money, you took things to prepare yourself, you took a suitcase, you took clothing, you took provisions for your journey. But the best thing that you can take with you, and the most valuable thing you can take with you is a taqwa. Is a taqwa. So we have to ask ourselves, what is this taqwa that we are commanded to take with us? Add to this that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave advice in an authentic hadith, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتِ Wherever you are in the world, have taqwa of Allah. So what is this taqwa? One of the best definitions of a taqwa in Islam is to say that a taqwa is العمل بطاعة الله على نور من الله رجاء ثواب الله وترك معاصي الله على نور من الله مخافة عذاب الله It is to act in obedience to Allah upon a light of guidance from Allah hoping for Allah's reward and it is to leave disobedience to Allah upon a light of guidance from Allah Fearing Allah's punishment. أقول ما تسمعوا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه يغفر لكم إنه غفور رحيم. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه. We're talking about the things which protect you wherever you are. The things which protect you, whether you're traveling or whether you're resident. The things that protect you in every situation. We've spoken about how your belief protects you. We've spoken about how following the sunnah protects you. We've spoken about how your prayer protects you. And now we are coming to speak about how a taqwa protects you. And bear in mind that a taqwa really covers all of the things that we spoke about. Because proper belief in Allah is taqwa. And following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is taqwa. And performing the prayers at the right time, in the right place, in the right way is taqwa. But taqwa is a comprehensive concept for doing everything that you can to obey Allah and avoiding every kind of thing which is disobedience to Allah. The more you do that, the better protected you will be. And if you want to think about how serious this issue is, there is a hadith from the noble companion Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Badiru bil a'ma hasten to do good deeds fitanan Hasten to do good deeds before a trial comes to you like a piece of the dark night. يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا أَوْ يُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا يُبِيعُ دِينَهُ بِعَرَضِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Hasten to do good deeds before a trial will come in which a person will wake up as a Muslim and go to sleep as a disbeliever or will reach the morning as a Muslim 
I will reach the afternoon as a disbeliever. Or he will reach the afternoon as a Muslim and he will reach the morning as a disbeliever. He will sell his religion for a small part of the dunya. The Prophet ﷺ told you the solution to protect yourself from all of the fitan. Badiru bil amal. Rush to do good deeds. Protect yourself by doing as many good deeds as you can and by avoiding as many sins as you can. Because every single good deed is an opportunity for Allah's protection to be protected and to be kept safe from the fitan, from the trials and the tribulations in any kind of thing, in the dunya or the deen. And every sin that you do is a potential cause of falling into these fitan, into these trials and tribulations, whether it be in your worldly life or whether it be in the greater thing, which is your religion. ثم صلوا وسلموا رعاكم الله على محمد بن عبد الله كما أمركم بذلك ربكم فقال قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حمد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق لا له لا يهدي أحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا ومؤيدا وظهيرا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء بالقربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكر الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه وآلائه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة